question um you know for you did you have lessons or did you have like a specific coach in preparation for this for this competition or uh, was this was this half and half all you got us through that um this time was a little different yeah uh because the previous competitions that i had done i were i was all i was in school through all of those this is the first competition i did that i wasn't in school um so and during the pandemic and everything it was difficult for me to you know find a place and time to see my former teachers as well um and so basically this competition i had to do everything on my own <laughs> i had to prepare everything by myself um and there were definitely challenges to that because i had to kind of be my own teacher and um that was such an important learning experience for me uh, to know that to have my own standards, right. To, to know what I think is good enough, not what my teacher thinks is good enough, but what I think is good. <laughs> um, and if I find an issue, I have to figure out how to, you know, how to, how to work it through, how to find a solution to it um, and not be dependent on somebody else. And a lot of times actually I thought about what my teachers had taught me um, and and I often think that's what like great teachers do, right? They teach you to become your best teacher. And um, I think my teachers had given me so many tips and tools and ways of um, looking at music in a way that when I was on my own, I kind of put all of those uh, ideas and thoughts and um, tools and techniques uh, into you know my mind. And I kind of picked and choose. I was like, wait, I remember when we worked on this in, I don't know, uh, in a Mendelssohn concerto. And then I was like, I'm gonna apply it for this, you know? So I was kind of putting all of these this knowledge that I learned from school together and making it my own. Um, so this was my first time, uh, you know, preparing all of this repertoire uh, on my own. Of course, there are some pieces that I had played before, I had learned when I was back in school. So there are uh, some influences from teachers and things like that. Uh, but there were also pieces, for example, the Brahms Sonata Number no. 2, I learned completely on my own. I had no lessons from beginning to end. Um, so that one was like really, really, uh, all the musical styles and stuff was just formed by me, basically. <laughs> and then, I mean, of course. I, so uh, that was that was a pure Serena Huang interpretation. Like that's something that you that, studied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, but no, I really, I really admired that Brahms because um, you, you actually – challenged me while I was watching I'm like oh she did such a unique bowing there I'm like I think I might, I might want to do that too and I think that's also like the point of competitions it's kind of to see what's possible to yeah. see what to see what's possible and to kind of use like an old classic and to you know how does this piece sound in 2022 back yeah. compared to how does this piece sound back in the 1950s I think that's yeah that's um you know it's an evolution of our interpretation as we gain more knowledge, we get more scholarship towards these right. 